And we're back. Hello. Welcome back to. Oh, I, got a burp. <laughs> <laughs> I did it away from the mic. Welcome. She's cute. She don't do that. All right, y'all. Welcome back to episode eight. Is it eight? Episode whatever episode this is, if it's eight, it's eight. Fun, fun, fun. Episode eight of the Untitled Africans podcast. Yes. <laughs> Working title in progress. Right. I'm Honestly, we're, and I'm Brian. Um, thanks for coming back. Thanks for listening again. Thanks for watching again. If you're watching, um, we appreciate it. We love it. Y'all are keeping us alive. Loki. Yes. Yes. We need this. No, dead ass. No, we really need this. It'd be a lot to do. Like, we're recording four and a half. Four hours later than we're supposed than to. Than we usually do. But it's like important. For no. Us. It's our it's our, <laughs> it's our it's avenue. Release. You know, it's our it really is our release. I haven't seen my therapist in months. This is gonna be No. <laughs> <laughs> Call your therapist. I'm done with you. No, right, but right. I like, you know, I think it's always good to have like something to, I, I'm not gonna lie, I low-key look forward to recording this with you every week. It's, it's, it's becoming low-key a highlight of my week every week. No, same. It's a good, cra- like, it's a good creative outlet. No, like even last week, we we're just like busy all week. We're like, recording day is not going to happen for us. Yo. Last minute at like 9 p.m. We were like, fuck it. We're doing this. We got to We got to do it. Now. That's good. Yeah. That's good on us. Yeah. Look at us. Hopefully, I hope we keep this energy past like season two and three. I know, and it's like neither of us want to do it. We're like episode. Like, girl, I'm so sorry. I have to fly. To, I have a show. I have LA. You know, I have a shoot. Um, can we do a Zoom? So tell me about your day, and we're gonna do the same ones. Zoom. Okay. Zoom recordings. Whatever it takes. Oh yeah. He's trying to abandon us when he goes on his little solo travel trips. It's not happening. Zoom. Recording. Not me and fucking. Not, can you imagine me having to pack this mic? Find some wine. Getting <laughs> having to get through security. Be like, um, sir, what is this? I do a podcast. Oh, okay then. Never mind. That's Keep it pushing. We'll be at customs for two and a half hours longer than everybody else. Like, sir, <laughs> microphones are. My, it's not a weapon. I swear. <laughs> Yo, uh, will this mic work once they tear it apart and they try to figure out who you are and why you have this? Amen. So tell me about your week, how or your day, whatever you remember. Girl, we haven't. When was the last? I saw you Saturday. Yes, yes. My week has been well since. I don't know. It's just been weird. What do you mean? Our after our last discussion, uh, it's been very up and down. Yeah, mm-hmm. roller coaster emotions. Honestly, I feel like I'm going through it right now. Um, Twenty five is very much killing me. Mm, you going through that quarter life crisis? Quarter life crisis, indeed. It's real, girl. Questioning my entirety, my like, Existence. my identity, purpose, all that shit. I'm, I'm just sitting in like full on existential crisis all the time. I'm like, am I supposed to be doing this? Is this where I'm supposed to be headed? Should I be doing something else? Is it, you know, should I just quit? Should I just drop everything, move to a remote island, just surf and open up, be a complete, you know, beach bum and like, just. What is what is this like like am i happy you know am i chasing money is this gonna make me happy or should i just follow what i'm like you know all that bullshit and i'm just like i'm sick of it it. i'm like can i i just want to reach a point in my life where i feel like every being of myself is just like oh my god the exhale Mm. the exhale that you like get after just and not the exhale you do in the middle of the day because you're tired (sighs) That sit on the edge of your bed, fucking te- <laughs> fucking nightdress hanging off your arms. <laughs> you know that like iconic like image of that black woman sitting at the edge. Tired. When I tell you that is the like, you literally of like putting into words the way putting into like imagery what I'm currently feeling. Like last was it last night or the a couple of nights ago I had a whole fucking panic anxiety attack over. All this bullshit. Life, Life, work, purpose. You know, like, am I am I supposed to be doing this? Mm-hmm. Should I be figuring? You know, I see all the, and then the whole like, oh, other people are doing this with their lives. Should I be X Y Z? Da da da. I'm like, oh. that is so real. And I legit realized I was like, 
I look, he can't breathe. Like, what the fuck? And that's a that's a panic attack. And I was just like, um, maybe let's not think about all this shit at once. So when I call my therapist. I'm gonna ask her for recommendations to get you your therapist as well. I don't have a therapist. Yeah. Have I spoken to them? <laughs> exactly. No. Let's start there. <laughs> no, girl. Find you one first. Because I'm like, I'm fine. I'm perfectly fine. Everything's fine. No, I, I have been. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. Currently sitting in a fucking pot of fire. This yeah. is fine. Yeah. I'm good. This is fine. Normal. It's cool. Yeah. No, but I, I do need to go back to my therapist. It's been a minute. This is a sign. <laughs> <laughs> Your therapist hasn't heard from you in two weeks, three weeks. Bitch, call him. Four months. Call that motherfucker. Ring, ring. Pick up the phone, baby. Pick up the <laughs> But how's your week, day been? Um, My week's been good, I think. And Just good? Week's been pretty good. What did I do this week? Oh. Yeah, no, it's been a good week. It's been like up and down for me since like April. Really? Yeah, and just trying to figure stuff out since leaving my job. And like these past couple weeks have felt a little bit more stable. Okay, that's so good. I speak too soon though, because you know, it can fall right back into the deep. You know, an actor's life is never stable. <laughs> right. But I got a booking today. Woo woo. Hey, we love to hear it. Now. I had to audition today. Bow, 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 bow. Let's go. I actually heard from my agent. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> we love when agents get back to you on time. So, yeah, I think this was last week. Yeah, last week I had my stuff hacked. Oh, yeah. And they finally were like, oh, wait, we have bank information. Let's use that. So, um, <laughs> you, got your fa- you got your Facebook back. I got my Facebook back. <laughs> so important <laughs> really the most pinnacle critical you know yeah, of course it's 2009 obviously um so yeah that was good have my facebook back booking that kind of stuff auditioning versus every three days or two days every 48 hours getting an alert like somebody signed into your account and we don't know who oh did you make these purchases oh blah 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 blah, blah. so there was none of that this week damn we thank the lord <laughs> so yeah amen in comparison, this has been a good week so That's far. Glad to hear it. I'm glad someone's at least having a good week while I'm in existential crisis mode. <laughs> Friend, I know. Send love and thoughts and thank you. Send thoughts and love, you know, lots of love and prayers. But, you know, as I always like to say, and if anybody asks, how are you? I like to say I'm alive, I'm healthy, and I'm employed. Mm. I don't know about that last one. Yeah, because I'm this close. I'm this close about to join you in the unemployment line. Because alive, good. Healthy, good. Good. Employed. Mm, Not sure if I want to be employed. (laughs) (laughs) But you know. Absolutely. Hit or miss. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into our, you know, favorite segment. What's plaguing the girls? What's What's going on in the timelines of the For You pages? What's... What's keeping the girls up at 2 a.m.? Twitter in, TikTok in, and all that. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. What is so it? our girl Lip Gloss is back. <gasps> Shout out to Lip Gloss with her Lip Gloss. Lip gloss. Oh, girl. Lip oh, girl is out here causing controversy, and all she want to do is just wake up and go with her hair. She does. You know, I found her YouTube channel. She has a YouTube channel? She has a YouTube channel, and it's almost like she's foreshadowing. Like she has a video about like what's it like being the ugly girl or something. And imagine this was like a month ago. She has another video from three months ago detailing that. And it's like shit she's already had to be dealing with before she was like, hey, I'm going to embrace my natural hair. It's like people calling her out of her name. Like, first of all, let's get one thing straight. She's gorgeous. Period. Because some people on the timeline really got her skin is really beautiful. It is. She, her skin is beautiful. Her face is beautiful. Her hair is beautiful. And I think that's what everybody is missing. But. but so the reason why this whole fucking natural hair debate went into this week, too, is because last week in her initial video where she talked about, I no longer want to, you know, have to, I want to just wear, get up, you know, put moisturizer in my hair and just go. Mm-hmm. So in that video, she said, I'm about to be pulling all the palm colored folk with this hair. Yeah. And that sent 
the hoe taps into a fucking tizzy. Tizzy, honey. Because they were like, what do you mean you're a black queen? Embrace your natural hair, but what do you mean you only going to put, you know, black men are attracted to natural hair queens too, da, 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 da. To the point where this man took pictures of her from her Instagram, created an entire fucking hinge profile, and started matching with other black men. What? And was like, and then came back to the time to the Twitter timeline and like, see, see, look at all these responses, look at all this XYZ. You know, black men are, you know, attracted to mind you, this girl just said that statement, you know, I'm about to pull white dudes with his hair as a joke. This was like as a joke in passing. I don't know what was lost in translation or what, and like it just went over. This man really took her pictures, catfished a bunch of dudes dudes and match with them on a dating profile on a dating app to prove like that black men are attracted to natural hair it's giving very much you did this for what why not for what you don't have a job you don't have somewhere to be you want a catfish god are these the men you sent down here to hunt and protect what they're out here creating podcasts and put Creating catfish profiles to, pl- to prove a point. Did he think this was research? Did he think this was statistically significant? I'm like, like I don't understand. The are you the behind Are this. you the Pew Institute? Like, what the fuck? What's, what? What's the reasoning? What's the logic? What was the reason? What, what was, was the reason? reason? Yo, I know. It like, in honestly, it literally. When I read it, when he was telling this whole fucking. Cause he really like he really felt like he did something when he put this on the timeline. I was just like, um, sir, first and foremost, that's creepy as hell. You ain't do nothing but make yourself look like a crazy perverted ass. Cause what do you mean? You just gonna take people's pictures? I mean, I get we put catfish and like yeah, but you did this and you advertised it. <laughs> and you put it on the timeline too. And like, you admitted it. See, but now what I want is all those dudes who matched with that profile. I want them to come forth. No, because even they were exposed. They didn't ask to be put on the timeline and be like, oh, they match with this girl. Like their profiles are also exposed. Like I feel like there's a there's a whole legal ramification somewhere in all of this. <laughs> Something about this has to be at least. Where's Nev Campbell? Where's the catfish <laughs> episode? We need Max and Eve. ASAP or no, who's the new co host with? I don't know, but it is a black woman. Yeah, shout out to her because she, she she's, she's very funny. Br- she's hilarious. Yeah, but yeah, I was just like, this is very weird. It's giving Dr. Umar energy. No, it's, it's giving... giving. You also need a therapist recommended to you ASAP because there was no re- what was the re- honestly there was no reason to do this. Yeah, you could have just gone on the timeline and you know said be like you know I know a lot of black men who would be very interested even if you did but at the same time I feel no. like she it's Nobody a nothing. it's a t- she didn't ask it's a TikTok why are you this upset about it so pressed that you went to make a whole dating profile uploads upload pictures of this woman that you know nothing about create a bio that was my thing that was my thing is like how in depth were you in this like to the point where people were really genuinely interested no because he really put these are my interests this is what i like what did you research this girl's whole profile page what was going on through your i have questions i have questions i have questions that i'm gonna need you to like z-way likes to say he would be an iconic guest Like our no, because I will not be respectful, and I want to be respectful to all my guests. Mm. Yeah, no, no, no. But yeah, that was insane. It was very fucking weird. I was like, so weird. I think, I think Twitter got his account banned though. So shout out to Twitter. Because one thing, one thing Twitter gonna do, they gonna shut it down. Period. Period. But on to more black uh, injustices. Oh no. We should have started on something lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, despair. Everything sucks. <gasps> okay. Jumping ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Apparently. So these two lovely little girls go to Sesame Place. Mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know what Sesame Place is. Nobody does. Sorry. Sesame Place is like Disney World, but for um, the Sesame Street characters. So they have like, you know, the people in like the costumes, you know, and they do parades and stuff. And so these two little two little black girls were, you know, at a parade, at a Sesame Place parade. 
I think one of the characters was coming down. I think her name is like Rosalia, Ro- oh, Rosalita. Yeah. yeah, Rosalita. So she's c- walking down. You see her high fiving these other people. Children. Yeah, children and s- some of them looked older. Yeah, yes, and so she gets to these two little black girls, and they're just like, huh, ah, ah. and she just goes, no, no, and keeps walking. And the internet was like, what the fuck? They, and you could see, like, oh, my, they, uh, they wanted to say hi to this character. They wanted to, like, hug her. Mm. All I could think of was Walt Disney would never. <laughs> Mickey Mouse would, would never, never. Never. Like, what? They just wanted a high five. They didn't want a hug. They didn't want nothing. They just wanted a high five. And this is Sesame Place. This is not Sesame Street. That's what I'm saying, like, and girl. Sesame Street was very clear to be like, um, so they just licensed some characters off of us. We don't really rock with them, like that's. It. that's but they got your name. Like, but they have your name, and when I and they have Sesame the likes, Place, yeah, and like their likenesses too, low key, because they look like certain characters that have been on Sesame Street. Yeah, because they ri- license them. I'm pretty sure Rosalita is from Sesame Street. Oh, she okay. Has no big word, you know, type status, but I'm pretty sure she's from there. From Sesame Street as well, but I think Sesame Place is like a local kind of thing in Pennsylvania, uh, around the Philly area, but it's not technically Sesame Street. You know? See, it's just a little park. But girl, if we hear Sesame Place, we know I'm Elmo, Street. Big Bird, Cookie Monster. I'm thinking, so y'all are racist. But then there was other videos, and then people have other stories coming out talking about some. Yeah, it seems that they do this a lot. There's an there was another video that somebody posted of like another, I guess, licensed character during a parade, high fiving little kids, and then you see him smack a black girl. Oh, that was freaking um, Ernie. Was it Ernie? Bird. Bird. It was not yellow. It was it a was big blue. Yellow. Either the, way, the big purple one hit a girl to the ground. That was a I saw that one too. Like tackled her. Yes, I was like, it was Bert. Bert is is, is the yellow. <laughs> but I was just like, so y'all do this. It seems y'all have an issue, or so y'all need to talk to some of these Muppets and like some of these people who are in these characters and being like you need to you know i feel i feel like i need disney standards at sesame place I you need may to talk to elmo because elmo ain't never done nothing like this i ain't never seen elmo in no controversy period period you know, elmo just be out here waving to the girls and boys because he's no he's that girl if he's you, not the two the three or the four if you can't give high fives at all make that a policy yes because now it looks very much like he he did the heisman on the girls he literally was like, <laughs> Becca. Rosalita was like, mm. <laughs> no. Much. After she just high fived like three other people. That's the thing. And then the, the thing was, was, like, these were little girls. I know. That's the what broke on their faces. That's what so... broke my heart the most is like these two little girls, all they wanted to do was say hi to Rosalita. Yes. And she just said, eh. <laughs> no. You. But then the thing was, it was like, it was the finger too for me yeah it was the uh-uh. i was like i was like oh so this is very much intentional it's giving a racist third grade teacher to me <laughs> no <laughs> no i want to know who was in the costume come out we come just want to talk come out it's like it's like that guy y'all finna jump me <laughs> <laughs> y'all finna jump me <laughs> be honest <laughs> Come out, girl. We just want to talk. Oh we just want to talk. God. We're not going to jump you. We just want to talk. It's a little bad. No, because we want our pound of flesh. That was fucked up because I felt that for those girls. really messed up. Like, if, my, if I had a daughter there, Jen. hey, I'm going to jail. I don't care. I'm going to jail because I'm grabbing you by these little styrofoam feathers things that you have, and I'm dragging you back to say hi to my child. You'd be like, I you know it. <laughs> <laughs> and snatch him up like a true black mother. Like, and that's what I'm saying is like, Disney would have had a tighter shit. That's what I'm saying. Disney would never. When they do the character meetups, the characters know there's like they can say certain they can't say certain things. They can't make certain you know actions. They can you know they can hug the kids, but they can't like do like there's strict rules. But I'm like, I need you to enforce this. Then if like if you can't high five, like why are you only high fiving a couple people? But literally, but then Sesame not. Sesame Street was for not necessarily just for, but for black and brown. Cause a lot, yeah. And there's a lot of like the, um, the earlier stuff was like all based in like 
very much POC neighborhoods in yes. New York, even though they don't like to stay, you know. Literally the Northeast. The irony is just wild right now. I it's, just don't understand it. It's very weird. But hopefully those girls, you know, got some... Uh, you know what I would have loved them to do? What? If, like, any of, like, the Disney parks are, like, Universal or, like, any of those, like, major uh, companies, like, saw, like, with this video, they gave those kids, like, free tickets to go see <laughs> to their parks. And do, like, a... Uh, they'd be like, they got a free meet and greet with Mickey and Minnie. But Sesame Place... <laughs> They got to be saying that last thing, but they might do that. That'd be smart. That'd be great marketing. Oh my god! If I was on their PR team, I'd be like, "Let's get on it immediately." I would be like, "If we, even if it if it it does come off at pandering, I don't care. At least those kids got to see some joy from some of their favorite characters because that broke my heart for them." You know what? Forget that. We need um, who's that new girl? Um, the black girl who'd be singing. Doc McStuffins? No. Uh, on the YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, the, the Trap Nursery Rhymes? Yes. Why has that Loki been my vibe? It's been I have been. I've, se- I've been seeing the video. I'm like, okay, I can rock to this. I know I'm forgetting her name. Anyway, but we'll we'll figure it out. A- in the, a- and like let the girls. But no, justice for those two little girls. I hope they got free tickets to go to, to Disney or Universal. Something. Because that was so heartbreaking. Last That's what I'm saying. But moving on yes. to some more controversy. So, do you want to hear about Babby? Do I? No, you don't, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. <laughs> you're so, going to tell me, you're going to tell them. I'll tell you, and y'all, y'all go here too. Everybody can get this trauma. Come on. No, everybody can get this disgusting trauma. I mean, Okay, it kind of depends. You know, I'm not here to yuck anybody's yum personally. Okay, go ahead. So basically, what is her name? Shan Body on Instagram. I guess she's kind of this like feminine coach, dating coach. I don't know her details necessarily. Um, But she was promoting this thing called Babbing, which I think she didn't make up. But um, she was just promoting it. And it's basically like... Spraying your vagina juice on your body as perfume. Yeah, who was it? Gwen Stefani did it first, but was it Gwen Stefani who who sold her stuff? Somebody. Goop. Did. You mean Gwen, Gwyneth Paltrow? One of them. Yes. That she, one. Correction. She was selling vagina candles. Oh, this is vagina perfume. This is the new thing. But my thing is, it's like you're not even using like your own oil secretions to like mix it in like flake, you know, in like a lab. No, you're just walk, mm, mm, walking out the house. You gotta get an all natural baby. So yeah, and basically the whole purpose of it is to like dead pants, att- dead pants to camera. Y'all hear this shit? Y'all, y'all hearing this shit? The whole point of it is to attract. This is one of the things that help attract well, mates. You know, she's trying to tell women, you know, they're embrace. Is, yeah, your femininity. Your thing don't stink, okay? Like it's normal, it's natural. You know what? I will keep an open mind. Yes. If this is what the cis girls are doing. I mean, who says you can't do it too? Get a little bit of juice up in there. Spray, spray, might attract some males. Just the whole thing is that's extract. Attracting a future partner. I'll stick to my Gucci, Chanel, and Tom Ford perfumes. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I'm good on that. Well, I think she, there's certain, you know, I think there's certain bodily secretions that once they're out of your body, let's keep them out. Yeah, it's gonna be out in a bottle. No, 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 no. Let's keep it out and not put it back on to like your pores. You know. See, what just kills me is that like I don't understand why some these like relationship gurus or feminine gurus aren't like you know find a man that's emotionally mature it's emotionally intelligent who treats you as an equal and listens to you Mm -hmm. doesn't belittle you it's like no girl get your vagina fluid and spray it onto your body and that's how you find a man you didn't know that then you will find your soulmate (laughs) all you know what? Why do I feel like a Yonla Van Zant would do some type of shit like Stop this? <laughs> I feel Stop like the, I feel like old girl is out there. You, she made a man scream into his into like a fucking hole in the ground. I the wouldn't put this. I would not put this past her and be the like, I'm sure she's probably out there telling some single girl, girl, go to the bathroom, 
you know, your secretions. Go ahead, just do do. Pee in a bottle. Whoa, okay. I don't know about that now. Oh, that might work. That's a whole nother thing. Okay. But let's go ahead, pivot to, you know, from bodily secretions to bodily anger. Oh. Yeah. What? So, our girl Kalani mm. was, you know, in line at Starbucks just getting her morning coffee, you know, getting her oat milk latte, mm. you know, doing her LA thing. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she hears this loud grating sound. And who else could it be behind her? But none other than self hating ass nope. Christian Walker. Nope. Now, for the girls who don't know who that is, okay. Christian Walker, son to Herschel Walker, who is a current Senate, I believe, Senate candidate for Georgia representative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His dad is a Senate representative for the state of Georgia, or his he's campaigning. He's not a senator, no, though. no, I don't know if it's senator, or House representative, candidate. He's running. Has to be representative. You're a senator, girl. I'm not here. He's running. He's currently campaigning because oh, you know okay. we're in primaries, whatever. So he's currently campaigning, but that's who his dad is, right? <laughs> so it's Christian Walker, and if you know Christian Walker, he's known for his very much far right rants on TikTok. And all other far right websites, because apparently I think he might have gotten blocked on TikTok and was told don't come back. Um, but so I guess Kalani is very familiar with him, mm. and so I guess she said to the barista, you know, be careful with, you know, him. He's very much an a hole or whatever. She says something to the barista. Christian, I guess he heard Kalani, and was just like. How are you gonna tell her that da, 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 it's my opinion? How are you gonna, you know, you're seeing that da, da, like wow, berating her while recording all of this for what we don't fucking know, nor I do mean, we care. The music clicks, isn't that his whole thing? I think so. I honestly have to this point, I truly do believe that Christian Walker is a fucking social experiment. He's a troll. No, he's a social experiment because <laughs> yeah. A, he's very much gay black mm -hmm. and very much femme and he just spews all this hate about all these minority group minority groups that he's a part of mm -hmm. he's like when will men be back to being men da, 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 da. you guys are out here painting your nails wearing necklaces wearing skirts yeah. and then during the, like the whole 2020 like black lives matter you know protest he was like blm is nothing but a bunch of terrorist groups like he speaks like an angry white man <laughs> But then it's like the vo like the rhetoric is coming from like this is very much like black queer like femme per not even queer gay purse and you're just like girl y'all fucking with me right where's where's Aston Kutcher this is punked no because when I saw him when I saw the Kalani video I wasn't familiar with him so mm. I thought it was a skit I was like no oh girl God, like oh yeah Kalani like how dare you <laughs> no he was dead serious and, and then because also in the screen recording I saw. Followed up with a picture of him like this, you know, clearly in his yeah. gay queer bag, posing and shit. So I was like, oh, this is a skit. No, tell me why they literally, after all this stuff, and then he went on Twitter and, like, talked shit about, like, Kalana being this, like, you know, super, like, woke person, but yet she's out here, like, da 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 you know, talking shit about him, right? <laughs> tell me why they found a tweet from, like, back when of him, like, I love Kalani. <laughs> <laughs> like... When Christian, when shit happens to Christian Walker, you're like, you cannot be fucking, like, you're just like, this has to be a joke. It just seems like he's a really bad actor, is what it's giving me. Like, you know, I don't know if you saw that, like, one GoFundMe or something. Oh, I got kicked out of my parents' house because I'm a Trump supporter. Please help. And then oh. all of these MAGA people donated. And, and then, then like, the thank you so much for your money. I'm going to go vote for whoever, whatever Democrat. And, and I think they were like, I'm going to go donate this to, like, a bunch of other, uh, pro like, I think yeah, it was, like, BLM, like, uh, BLM, like, bail. Remember when, like, all the bail funds were coming out during the protest? Oh, yeah. I think they went and did like donated like a whole bunch of that. Shit. I was like, this, this gives, that's what Christian this is, Walker gives me. Like he's just doing this for views, support. He just knows that if he's just like the queer, outlandish black, the outlier in this group, of course he's gonna get attention. Like 
Huh? Obviously. Nobody else that looks like you was on this side that you're on. And the thing about it is, like, his dad is even fucking worse, honestly. he yeah. There's, like, allegations of him beating his, like, white mom. Hold on. Yeah, apparently. Not, a lot of, like, stuff is coming out about his dad that, like, happened, like, way back when. And you know his dad, like, played football. So he's, like, a football star. Oh. And it, guess what? His dad is running as a Republican, too. So you like just a far need a lot right, of childhood like, trauma. Like, you just need somebody who is it seems love like, you. It seems like a lot of, like, internalized, like, self-hatred. Yeah. This. Like, I'm like, so you're doing all this. Are you trying to get your dad's attention? Is that is that what's happening? Like, dad, please, please love. set me on no. your side. I'm on your side. <laughs> no, it's, no, literally, it's what, that's exactly what it's giving. Everything that is part of my being, it goes against my very living as a queer black male just please if it means that you'll accept me daddy please honestly i feel like we've already talked about christian walker too much he does not deserve all thank that you fucking- next let's talk about some black excellence let's get into it black tv this week black t- black entertainment apart from us you know black excellence in tv or whatever but like black entertainment in general has it's just been giving it's been giving this whole week, this whole month, like... Absolutely. I'm so excited for everything on my TV screen that's coming, that is out. Okay. So we've got Jordan Peele's Nope, the movie. Yes, coming with this Friday. With Kiki Palmer, Daniel Kaluuya, yes. and I don't know who the other actors are. Okay, but I never thought <laughs> see Kiki Palmer and Daniel Kaluuya fucking dapping each other up, and I love it. Her during this whole press tour has been the most entertaining thing. I love... I said this, but like... It's episode two, I think. I am here for the Kiki Palmer Renaissance. Mm, I am yes, loving. I'm, lo- I'm loving her on everything. She just did like this. Uh, I think it was like a Vanity Fair or like some autocomplete um interview mm-hmm. where she does like Google common Google searches under what is uh, Kiki. One of those like Vanity Fair yes. fire type stuff. Yes, she did an autocomplete interview, and I love. She was fucking hilarious in every. I'm like, why? I bet this girl needs more screen time yes Issa Rae literally tweeted like something. yeah like, I saw that Issa Rae Kiki Palmer makes everything, everything funny like we love funny. her we are here for a Kiki renaissance I've and... been trying to avoid spe- spoilers for the movie like and that's the thing there is none no but I don't want any indicator of anything that's gonna happen in any and that's the thing there is none it's just her talking yes oh, okay let me go watch. everyone like the entire press tour people have been speculating like What's the? They ask him, "What's the movie about?" I'm like, "Well, it's Jordan. You know, it's gonna be subversive. Like, it's gonna make you think. Um, you know, and you know, there's a lot of stuff that happens, and you just have to go and watch. I That's their. It. I'm like, I, I love it. the. Come on, PR media training. Yeah. They know. They went to the Matthew Knowles School of Media Training. They know. Deflect and give vague answers. Yeah, you're gonna have to watch to find out. And sure enough, has gotten everyone excited. Even people that I would not expect. Even people that I've talked to that I would not expect to go see a Jordan Peele movie after Get Out mm-hmm. want to go see Nope because they're just like I just want to see what it's about. It looks weird as hell. They're like, there's nothing making sense. There's like cowboys in it, but then there's fucking rodeo, and you're just like confused as hell. I wonder if it's gonna make the girls leave the theater and like they're like the first Jordan Peele and Daniel Kaluuya. <gasps> that was funny to witness. <laughs> that was funny. I was like super into the movie, and then you just see people walking out, and it's like. No, it's not even that. It was the my favorite part was to see um white people and black people react to the part when the cop lights showed up. Not when who we saw who got out of the cop car, right. when the cop lights showed up. Who cheered and who was like, "Oh shit." Was like <laughs> the best like gotcha moment yeah. to watch cuz like you're all these white people are like, "Oh my god, finally white a cop." Oh my god, he's safe. Wow. They're thinking, oh, Daniel Kaluuya's character is gonna be fine. And then black, black people are like, no. oh fuck, I fucking knew you it. Were so close. He, it was like he was so close to getting out. You this is so it. Close. He was not. No. And then we saw his friend Reggie. Was it oh. Reggie? A little, little Re- Re- no, a little Rel. Wow, Lil Lo- funny as fuck. Yes. But <laughs> we saw a little Rel come. Every black per every black person was like, oh. <gasps> We all fucking sighed. I was like, you know what? I was when I was watching that part. I was like, Jordan. I was not thinking about Lil Rel at all. I was <laughs> like, Jordan, please make it somebody who's gonna. I was like, back. I was. Do not and make bleeding. us, please. I we can't take no more suffering. And Jordan Peele was like, I know, I got you, I got you. I was. That was probably like the best scene to watch. Yes. That and the um. 
the scene when they're trying to get out the house and he goes, Rose keys. Rose the keys. Rose, give me the keys. And then he Rose where the keys. Like that first, she's like, I'm looking, I'm looking. And then she's like, You know I can't do that. I said, ah, bitch. I wanted a root for you. But if like I feel like, you know, between that and then us. Oh yes. Absolutely incredible movie. Yes. Peter Nyong was on TikTok now. <gasps> she is. is Shout out to Black Excel. Excellence in Entertainment. Yes, Lupita Nyong'o is just. I'm waiting for her and uh Carrie Washington to collab. That's gonna be epic. Why her and Carrie Cause, Washington? Because Carrie Washington is on TikTok too, and she's killing it on TikTok. She loves a good like TikTok. Honestly, she's into the trends. I feel like when she's ever, whenever she's doing press for anything, and they were like, "Hey, we need you to do a couple TikTok." I feel like she's very much like, "Oh my god, yes, I'd love to. I'd be down." She's in. Yeah. I didn't know she she made TikToks. Yeah, you gotta check her out. I'm here for it. But what else? It, um, what's the other movie that's co- is it movie or? Um, let's talk about how we definitely forgot to talk about the Women King <gasps> with Trump. Viola Davis. King. Just oh, there are no words. The I'm so excited for this. Of melanin. The story in, in itself is it looks very good, and knowing Viola, I know she's gonna give. I know we gave her a lot of flack last episode because of um. Who, who, who's who's we? No, who's we? Oh, cause... you speak French now? <laughs> no, we? we gave her a lot of. Who's we? We gave her. We. I don't know why you're, you're interchanging between French and English. I need you to pick up. I need y'all. Language. If y'all. A language. If y'all are watching or if y'all are listening please go back and listen to what we talked about when we talk when we talked about the show first ladies on showtime and we're talking about her portrayal of michelle obama Ooh, I to know this <laughs> either way i think knowing viola knowing her like you know prowess and just how great she and like the backbone and all the amazingness that she brings to a character yes and how important this story is and how epic the story is and how literally an epic <laughs> and how I feel, I feel like we are going to get justice and full on come up. It's woman said it's the turn she to me. <laughs> trained for four hours, five days a week for that physique. Honey, Viola Davis don't play. She had never. She was in that role. About her performance. She was in that role. People have been giving her crumbs as she was coming up, and she got her thing with Meryl Streep. She got how to, and she was like. Oh, yeah, this is what y'all been missing out on. And she has come with everything. To this day, I still feel that um, they should have given us a pointing Oscar to her tears and snot after she gave that monologue in Fences. Not to the tears. And where has I been, Troy? She got an award for that. No, I don't think she won. Denzel didn't, but she did. She won an Oscar? I'm fairly sure she did. But it was Denzel who didn't because some people were like, oh, he didn't do as well as he usually does. I still like, I still know that monologue. And what was I, Troy? <laughs> what was I all those 18 years? Stand right beside you. You didn't think I didn't have dreams? What? I didn't have hopes. I'm telling you, I know this monologue. Word for word. I could literally perform word this. Word for word. Word for, for, literally. It's, I think it's like, honestly. It's um an iconic monologue. August iconic. Wilson? August Wilson. Screen, like, incredible screen and um stage writer first all, and foremost all the women between 18 to 45 have this save for showcase oh yeah yeah <laughs> you're going in like if you're going to an audition you're doing that violet from uh, no, fences don't do it don't do it if you're I'll, if you're not gonna do it justice don't no but if you feel you'll like never be on viola davis's level don't do it to yourself maybe do it in a decade <laughs> after people are for loki kind of forgotten Forgot like who's gonna it. forget that right like maybe when it's you she know, ate. shakespeare level so when all the girls are doing it i wonder if she had to do it like multiple takes for what for that monologue vala davis they did it on broadway or theater before. oh yeah she did so she i, was I always forget she comes from theater no wonder like she has that like you know, work ethic about her. Yeah. Uh, like when you're doing a play, you got to do it over and over and over and over again. Eight nights a week, isn't no it? No less than a hundred times in front of people. So I think for her to do it at that point, it's muscle memory. Mm. Girl, this is just it. You think, it, you think it was a one take and it's in the can type of situation with that one? I think it depends on her and what she thinks of it, especially the way her and Denzel seem like. Denzel's like, oh, you're everything, so you let me know what you think. I could see her being like, giving her, like, you the director now. Is this good? Okay, but, or is she like trusting them? But I I could definitely see her getting and that it, done. And she was day. incredible in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Yes. Oh, she was a new woman. She was Ma Rainey. I love her. 
<laughs> yeah, she's everything. I want to say something else about her. Oh, okay. We didn't talk enough about the woman king in and of itself. Oh, okay. Okay. Get into it. Okay. Because I feel like you're more excited for this. Because, than- you know. Black. I'm excited, but you're just like, this is my fucking Wonder Woman. This is my Marvel moment. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, girl. Black this is your stage. It's a black female led army. Need I say more? I don't need to say no more. And guess what? It's the, it's the Dora Milaje come to life. The is <laughs> rich. I'm the living for that. The melanin is the rich. Melanin. I'm living hey. for it. Hey, imagine, you know Black Lady Sketch Show? Yes. It's a black girl courtroom. <laughs> black hey. Lady Courtroom. Hey, black Lady, lady Courtroom. <laughs> black Lady Production. You look around. I know that set was lit as fuck. Black women everywhere. I know that. I know that First makeup. Black and, women everywhere. I know that hair that hair and makeup trailer smelled like nothing but just <laughs> grease. Shea butter. <laughs> Shea butter goodness. Honey. I know for a fact they had Just- pounds of Vaseline in that trailer because I can tell from the trailer itself when those girls were sweating, you could it was not glistening, glistening. 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 They had Vaseline on hand. Like, oh my god, I never felt this before. <laughs> Watching that trailer, like this is the black girls like Wonder Woman. I yes. promise you, I feel like this, and it's a true story. Yes. that's the other part that's like crazy. Yes, it's based off a whole true story. I was like, finally, like. We're talking about Black history in a way that it's not about slavery and the oppression. I mean, it ties into like how Black people fought for themselves in Africa yeah. against white people. I love how it's, it's not about slavery. It's We're about our slaves and being repressed and being whipped and and not being allowed into buildings. Like Yay. it's about the empowerment of Black people and the Black women. It's giving very much what Marseille Martin said um, about her production company. I'm not. Do- mm. I'm not doing black trauma. Not here for black trauma. I'm not here for black trauma. No. Yeah, I think that's what Viola <laughs> Davis is doing with her production company. Like she's like, yeah, this is. Well, this, this is produced is by from her production company. Oh my god! Yeah. Stop to her. Yes, Look, girl. Viola Davis is killing the game. When you have that kind of talent. It takes a while for the people who need to see you see you simply because because of how you look. But when Period. they see you. I'm, you have the money to back it up. I hope she got Meryl Streep fucking checks for this shit. Yo. I hope she did. The greatness. Because I promise. Because I'm I working pro- with you. One day. We claim it and we receive it. Because, honey, girl, let's let's talk. You want an African? Uh uh-huh. You know, I was born there. I don't have to I'm go t- through <laughs> vocal training. I know. I, I know. I'll listen to my. Just, I just gotta, you know, just, just gotta hang out with my mom nonstop for, exactly. <laughs> and I'll get the accent right down packed, baby. baby. But I'm very excited for Woman King. Me too. It's She's not gonna be good. September, but Fuck. I know, I know. But she gave us a little. Trailer. Wait, September when? I think the end of September. <gasps> Wait, am I gonna? Mm, mm. Am I gonna miss Have it? You better put on that VPN location blocker. <laughs> Find a way to watch it. No, because we actually have to give her all the points. So, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Very excited. Yeah. What else is in Black Entertainment? Everything is Trash premiered this week. Everything is Oh, trash. yeah. Was it this week or last week? It might have been last week. Because I think I watched, like, the first yeah, two episodes. Yeah, you're actually right. It's technically last week, yeah. Have you seen it? I watched one episode so far or two. I think I watched two episodes so far. I love her. The main character? Yes. Yeah. I'm like, girl, she's a podcaster. Ting. Ting. I was like, dang, can we be this vulgar? <laughs> It's giving what well, I that's wish. the thing though. It's like she can't be that. She can be that vlogger, but she's getting a check at the end of the right, day for she's it. Like inside of an actual. That she like she thing. yeah, and like they do they produce her like podcast, and that's like oh that's so great. But girl, she talks about every ain't nothing left off the table. I'm like girl, I could not imagine because so like- <laughs> we talk shit to the to the few listeners who do know us. Y'all be y'all be quick. Be like Brian, I cannot believe you said yeah, girl, I said it and what. Yeah. Yeah, what? <laughs> and what about it? Yeah. But no, I I love how she's just so. I love that with black entertainment, like black writing and black television, it's all about being unapologetically and yourself black. Yes, in every different like facet and intersectionality that it comes with. Yes, 
Because not only it's like because like we've seen like white girls be absolutely fucking messy and their lives turn out be perfectly fine. Like, give me a black girl who gets to be messy and trashy and just like does not have her life together and is just like just going through like life like the rest of us has sixty thousand K in debt from college loans and just credit cards that she's taken out so she can, you know, support herself. Mm -hmm. And like she'll still be okay at the end of it. Give me that storyline. I could totally relate. Yeah. And I'll watch. And she's was it on Hulu? Yeah, Hulu. Mm, love that. Yeah. I'm very excited to see the rest of the season. Yeah, me too. Because after the first two episodes, I was like, okay, now I'm in. I want to see more. Because her brother is like a politician, which is kind of... Oh, he's, yeah, he's running for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's such a mess. And, he, and he's like married to this... And his wife is Nigerian. The actress plays the character who is of Nigerian descent. So... In episode two, they go into like her whole like identity crisis, like... Oh, you know, have I become like totally whitewashed? You know, have I abandoned my like, you know, Nigerian roots? Because she grew up very Nigerian, and it's like yeah, a whole thing. But I didn't know she was Nigerian. Yeah, but the show in itself, I think is, I think it's doing a great job. I'm I'm enjoying it, it and I like the humor, where it's just like, I don't know how to describe it. NBC comedy type humor, as my first one to put it. Like, it's not like Very you're much. Martin Fresh Prince. So this is black humor. Like, no, 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 you're right. It's very much like it is. It does give so- NBC, sitcom yes, syncomy. Yeah. But like, it's like very much one camera. Yeah. And I enjoyed that. And they have a token white boy who's actually kind of funny. Yeah. He's hitting on old girl, the best friend hard. I don't remember her. I don't remember none of the characters' names. It's right the now. first episode. No one's going to fault you for that. Yeah. But everything is trash. Go watch it on Hulu. It's genuinely good. What a topical title. Absolutely. No, because everything is absolutely trash. <laughs> Actually trash. No, that episode where she was like, y'all, I have to get into my credit card debt. She was like, <sighs> and she like had, she, she had a hidden box. Oh, yeah, let me not spoil Wait, it. Wait, hidden box? Let okay, spoilers spoil it. for everything so- is trash. <laughs> <laughs> everything is trash. trash. No, literally. Hold on. I really hope there wasn't now your phone's turned over. Battery bad. No, it's fine. It's fine. Was your cup empty? Yes. Oh. How many more spills can we take? Please. I don't want to talk about it. Let's keep going. But yeah, everything is trash. <laughs> Actually, fuck it. Keep it, honestly. Because. <laughs> See the disaster that is. Y'all don't understand what goes behind putting this show together every week. But we do it out of love and passion for this project. Yes. And we just love to, you know, come here every week and just embarrass ourselves. Because <laughs> <laughs> we be struggling. Yes. Um, but, okay, on this whole sitcom type thing. So what I've noticed is that so they're green lighting all these shows that is like, black female led and like comedic and casual and fun oh the networks are hopping on the bandwagon of Issa ray type shows Issa, oh insecure oh, green light watch black women okay you want to know my favorite kind of uh tv shows now to watch hmm. four black women living in a <laughs> black city <laughs> Living their lives, dealing yeah. with sex, love, and rock and roll, or whatever the fuck. Right, exactly. And just being black in their full existence. That's my favorite. There's at least, there's, let's see, there's Sisters on BET. Mm. We've got Harlem on Amazon Prime. Um, 20s, also on BET, right? Yeah. All these shows, I'm like, I'm here for every single one. Every single one. But, where is the- I'm here for the renaissance of black entertainment, honestly. Where are the black fail shows? There is one. There's on one. BT. You mean crew? I know. No, no, no. About brothers. Crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am talking about okay. brothers. There's brothers. Yeah. They're sisters and there's brothers. Yeah. But they're both Tyler Perry vehicles. So I'm just like, I take them with a grain of salt. There's also crew, which I think is. Good. We love crew. There's four black male leads and then. Um, Nicole Byer. Yes. We love her. Funny, super funny comedian. But like, other than that. Like, I will, like, tell my boyfriend, oh, I'm watching this. And he'll be like, I mean, it looks funny, but, like, for I want a show for, like, more. I will say, though. Like, um, I'm like, oh, rap shit premieres this week. He's like, I mean, yes, go City Girls, but I I don't really want. It's the renaissance of black female entertainment. It Shut is. the fuck up and sit the fuck down. I mean, they should. 
they should. But I also want to see some black male live TV shows. Like Honestly, I'm good on it. And I'll say I'm good on it. I'm not gonna lie, more, I'm good on it. And more just POCs in general. Like I don't know if you know this show on HBO Max. I'm not forgetting what it's called because the season ended some months ago. But it's about this um, Pakistani woman who's like trying to navigate like dealing with her mom because she's trans and like you know mom isn't really. Fully I know exactly what you're talking about. You know I've seen I, it. Yes, I've seen it's it. It's so good. It's very good. But I'm just like, this is the kind of stuff. Like, I feel like we need a gamut. Like, these networks are always like oh. hyper focusing on one type. So let's talk. There's a uh, what's it? Um. So you know how there's been like this popularity within like a lot of sitcom shows or like a lot of like network TV shows for like Wednesday and like comedy nights where it's like mm. telling the story of like so this. Bit- I have we love her. She's st- they just started production, so I'm yes. very much excited for that. Yes. But um, how like it'll take like a character, like a comedian, telling their story from like them growing up in like the 20s. So we've got Fresh Off the Boat, uh, the Goldbergs, you know those kind of stories, right? Well, now there's one on H. I think is it? It's on HBO. Mm-hmm. It's called Gord- the Gordita Chronicles. It's about um, this immigrant family who migrates from the Dominican Republic to Miami in the 80s. And it's like their whole story and it's about this little girl like learning like american culture i feel like anybody who actually our entire audience would love this show because it goes through the culture shock of like learning american you know slang culture all that shit where are they from the dr dominican republic yes so good and it's like trying to find your community you know while you're in the u.s and like you know still like trying to stay a cut connected to like your own culture mm-hmm. and i remember there's just the funniest thing there's this one scene where like the little girls like decided to celebrate her first american halloween you know just like we all were mm-hmm. you know and her grandmother shows up and she's like that's the day of the devil da, da, da. You, the same shit wow, our pa- so it's not just kenyan to do that no it's like yeah so like i feel like our entire audience would love and like completely connect to that show so as far as like poc like tv goes i think there's Definitely streaming services are definitely supplying the content, but there are some oh, niches wow. that aren't like, you know, that are missing certain je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. reality. Yeah. Like, but like, in all honesty, okay. I am I would not I'm a, I would not be down for like a whole black all black male cast lead. It doesn't even have to be led all TV black show. Male. But I like, feel I feel like crew kind of like fills that hole. Yeah, but I mean, like, I feel like a lot of these shows are literally tailored for black women, and black men can watch it too, but, but like, I want more of, like, a diverse, you know, like, Living Single was kind of, like, open to anybody and everybody. But that's what I'm saying. I feel like Crew is very much like that. Crew kind of, it follows, what, four black men mm. with, and then I think... Honestly, Nicole Byer is more of a supporting character in this in, in that show, if anything. Me too. She's a series regular. Yeah. But, but you know, yeah. she she's really more of like a side character to her brother. The story is more about her brother, his friends, yeah. and their, you know, their trials their and tribulations. Yeah. The married one, the single one, the quote unquote, you know, not so smart one. So they have like they tick certain boxes and I feel like they're definitely it definitely explores a different side of, you know, the black male experience. Yeah. There's like that intersection of like, you know, because they have episodes where they discuss mental health or, you know, being black in the workplace and being the, you know, token, you know, kind of. So I think if anything, that show kind of does being the married friend in your group yeah. kind of a situation. So I think that show, it does it well. Yeah. I, think- I feel like any other shows that would come along would only be just either repeating or copying that and either they would do it and eh, and it would tank or it just wouldn't like hit well and the thing about it the creator and writer comes from the school of Issa Rae so that's why like this show would like it captures you know the intersectionality of being black and male so well that's true he learned from the best yeah I think I just want like more just diverse tv shows like I don't want just another black female group I love it. I love it. I'm watching. We now. eat it up. Let's be but honest. I want more diversity. Just the thing that gets me is these networks like 
pinpointing something like where are the black friend groups where one of them turns into a freaking werewolf like we don't oh. have none of that kind of stuff yeah they canceled like, love lovecraft country didn't they even that was about like it, that one was, uh, it was low key a- relevant it was talking about segregation and all of that i want somebody in 2022 two black best friends a boy and a girl and the girl finds out that she's a freaking witch and now their friendship is all twist turned upside down as they have to fight crime and stuff the new and the fucking side <laughs> down <laughs> what's it called the new um the new hocus pocus movie that's coming out it's got a black um lead oh, the really? girl yeah she's i guess i guess i don't know from the teaser trailer it looks like she might turn into a witch mm. so that could be interesting because yes. but you're right i don't think there's a lot of like black sci-fi ish or even oh, like yeah. you know that's the storytelling and like the idea is completely out there yeah lovecraft country they did so it did so well and i really did I, i'm a, i'm still a obsessed with show. show i feel like if given the chance they definitely if they if they were given the season four uh stranger things budget they would have ate them up they would have ate them up that would have been amazing could you imagine but i mean if they were on netflix they would have been canceled two seasons prior. but they're on so. hbo max and they still got canceled after <laughs> season know. one i know so there's no i feel like there's low-key no hope but we can yeah i just want more like but you different... know you know what i will say what i want mm-hmm. i want another black queer show like noah's ark for those of you who know, Noah's Ark was a show about four black gay men living in LA. One was a writer, one was a nurse, or he, they worked. He worked in a HIV clinic. One of them was a professor, um, and I think who was the other one? One was a writer, the professor. Who am I forgetting? Either way, they were all you know. And oh, and one was a clothing designer. Um, and he was considered like quote unquote the player of the group, and he he was very promiscuous and like Noah, who was the show was named after, was like the main character. It was kind of like Sex in the City, but for black gay men. They yes, black? yes, all of them. Oh wow! Wait, yes. What was this on? When did this come out? Girl, this was like back in like the early two thousands. Oh, wow. I had I I bought oh, the they entire. Were ahead of their time. And they had two seasons and a movie and a quarantine sequel like kind of like a where are they now kind of situated like all the other good shows we're doing and like i watched the all i've seen all two seasons multiple times i've seen the movie like three times it's genuinely a good show and it like delved into you know black queer issues Mm -hmm. and like you know being within the lgbtq community and like also being black dealing with like the racism the colorism I think it was a great show that did that. And I wish they would give it a reboot. That's the one show I wish they give a reboot to. They give it a reboot to everything else, honey. Everything else. Everything else but the good shows. But that's one show that I'm just like, if anything, if Patrick Ian Polk would just, please, please give us, give us a reboot. I would love, and don't give it, don't give us none of that woke BS. I want just your... be whatever the reality is. Yeah, let them exist in their own realities. Like don't don't. I'm this is it's gonna sound really bad, but I Loki kind of agree with like you know, be with careful. the whole like you know. I feel like they're always trying to interject like some woke like ness into everything. It's like can we just not every single queer character is Loki fighting for their fucking <laughs> rights to be queer and like to. Like, nah, girl. Be happy can we just? Can I just year? go to work? Exist, you know, deal with my love life. Not every black character is like on the front lines of every BLM movement. But the real gag is that on these shows, they're all like, "Oh yeah, fight the power," and we just want things to be better. But then in reality, nothing is happening. It's literally all going backwards. But on the TV, hey, we're all fighting. We're all woke. Girl, no, it's not giving you reality. And the thing about it is, it's like the those kinds of like those say like similar like you know the characters, the you know POCs are like you know minority characters who are like always like, oh you know trying to fight for their existence in everyday life. It, it's it never does anything for the storyline. Mm, it never pushes added. the story of the character or like you know the person. I'm just like, okay, like dear white people, perfect example. You didn't like the show. I loved the movie. 
the mm-hmm. show in itself the, the show in itself i was just like okay sam is gonna keep fighting so even at the point to where the character herself got tired of always being on the fucking front lines you know i feel like that was at least more relevant to the story though that was like one of her personality traits really but i feel like it that's i feel like that would imagine the ad- the adaptation from the movie character and her like her goals her inspiration like adapting that into the show to four seasons they made the fucking last episode a musical oh really yes i i couldn't get you, past season three exactly i mean not that it wasn't good it just wasn't giving what i expected so i was just like so that's what i'm saying done i think let's elevate you know let's tell real stories yes let's make them realistic i'm waiting for a uh i think that's what insecure did so well that's what i'm saying it's like you you know isa was it was just like isa living her life every day and dealing with the shit that's in her forefront yeah yes there was shit going on around her on the you know daily okay, yeah. like fucking did they ever find miss uh what's it called what's that <laughs> finding uh finding La- toyota <laughs> finding toyota <laughs> Finding Latoya? Did they ever find Latoya? Like there was shit going, you know. There were storylines in the background of like you know every episode. Like, and then there was that one episode where like it was uh, no, there was one season where there was like a their show that they were all focused on was like scandal, a scandal esque oh, type show. Remember? Yeah. I that's what I loved. It's like you know because we do that shit. We obsess over specific like literally like this entire episode. Nods yeah, of things going like, around in the world yeah. where it's like, but you know they didn't make it the characters entire personality yeah and i'm just like it just feels like you know white executives white executives pushing black creators to pander to black audiences to tell these kind of stories let's get us in the writing room i feel like we could write some good shows i've actually been trying to write again because i recently remembered that i used to want to be an author growing up like that was no way my career like i wanted to write um, specifically horror and sci-fi non-fiction books or fiction books definitely not non-fiction Ooh. fiction books and then like as i got older like it just seemed like this is not a real career path right and i just let that go to the wayside like but imagine just- with your background and like you know of life over like where you come from the stories that you would have told yeah, I'm like, I wish I, you know, worked on that more and really refined my skill in that more. Maybe that that's a, so fun. Maybe that's a goal. Put that back on your uh, to-do list kind of a yeah, thing. Yeah, I think I should. At least something, right? Something, girl. Absolutely. Because even the experiences, like, non-horror, sci-fi related, real life be a doozy. Like, there be stories we have to tell. Girl. That are just hilarious and entertaining. And we just need, you know, the right platform, the skill, because not just anybody can be a writer. Mm. You know, you have As to be able to. Learned, Tyler Perry. How <laughs> do you say that now? I'm not saying he's a bad writer. I'm just saying not everyone should write. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you know, with a combination of good stories and great writers, like, I feel like all of us well, have a story to tell. Absolutely. Yeah. So. I feel like that's low-key what TikTok is. Like, people don't realize it, and they kind of put it into trends more, but, like, people be telling crazy stories in a great way. Yo, those, fashion. those Reddit, um, I don't know if you, oh, with the subway surfer. Messy. Girl, I That's live. Pure mess. Those are giving lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I live. Lifetime just needs to take some of those and be like, hey, can we work with you? There's anymore? one that like, pops up on my timeline all the time about the girl who, um, who's like cousin or older. Yeah, whose older cousin had been talking about this Tesla that he wants to buy mm-hmm. or whatever. And then she got sick of him talking about it and and like talking down to her about like what she does for a living and like her paycheck. And she was just like, mind you, she was making good money and she had a great job. But like he was always talking down on her. So you know what she went and did? Mm-hmm. She went and bought the Tesla that he wanted in the exact specifications that he had. And you know what she went to go do? The day she got the Tesla, apparently the same day she had to go pick up her nieces and nephews to take them out for like a day or whatever. So she goes, she goes to pick them up and pulls up in the Tesla, same color, same like everything that he wanted. And 
he was like, oh, you know, it, you must, it must have been hard to find out, like, a bank to, like, you know, fund oh, this. Da, 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 da. She was like, no, I bought it all cash. The title's my name. Honey. And she, you know what she did? She pulled out the title <laughs> and showed him. And No car, no baby. And, like, the more he was looking at the car, that, the more he realized, this is the exact car that I wanted. LOL. And so. so she's going to come over there with a big bow on top of the car and been like, surprise, <laughs> I got a Tesla. Thank you. While he's okay, thinking it's his gift. And then, so, like, apparently after that, he just got real quiet and, like, went back inside and, like, she went off with me. But apparently her phone was blowing up with her family members. Like, you should have done that. That shit was petty. Like, why did you do that? Like, you know, da, da, da. you should have never talked shit about me. Just... That's the thing. It's, like, stories. Like, I'm like, girl, I would, t- <laughs> I would sit here and watch. Yeah. Be like, tell me the whole story. Tell me how you talked to them. Great, great potential episode. Oh, yeah. For any kind of show. I'm just waiting for like Black Mary. Oh my God, Pl- Black Mary needs to come back. Is it coming back? I don't know. Then don't bring it up. Don't we- get my hypes up. No, hypes I'm up. just saying it needs to come back. I've missed that show. It hasn't been out for like ten years. Yeah, because we've been living it. <laughs> we've been <laughs> we've been living the latest episode of Black I know. Mirror. I know it's tragic, but I think that's it for. Yeah, we've been trying to record this episode for the last three hours. Y'all do not want to know what time it is right now. Let's not talk about it. But we do it because we love it. It's our passion. Per. Period. On that note, well, let's end on a high note. Where's my cup at? Where's do my I have cup my cup? At? We got to cheers. Spill nothing. What is there to spill? Is there even? Oh, damn. Yeah, nothing to nah! spill. Did you finish? Did I finish this? Somebody did. <laughs> Oh, can't be giving away free, you know. And on that note, y'all, this has been the Untitled Africans Podcast, Episode Eight. Thanks for I'm Brian. It. Cheers out. Thanks.